Yeah, he, he jerks that one back, so let's see why. I think he's got a little anterior humerus on the front right, so let's let him just take that in for a second. What? Really? Okay, well, you'll get a little lunch later if you just behave yourself. All right, you ready to work a little more? Give me a kiss if that's a yes. So we have um, a kissing dog today named Riggs, and this is the owner mother named Amanda. And um, Riggs is approximately two years old and is, get this, part Chihuahua, part Papillon, which means butterfly. And um, uh, what else do we know? So Amanda works at a big animal rescue shelter in Brooklyn, right? Uh, Tell us what that place is. And I'm gonna put the description box below so you guys can look up their website and learn a little bit more. So it's the city shelter. Um, it's the Brooklyn Animal Care Centers of New York. There is one in every borough. Um, however, since the pandemic occurred, the location in Queens and the Bronx was closed until further notice. Um, and we also have one main location in Manhattan. So one of the big things when you're going to work with an animal is, especially I've never met uh, Riggs before, is you have to bond first, right? So they'll let you work on them. I think we've got through the first hurdle. We're bonded. This is terrific. Let's uh, hear a little bit about what happened in February. So in February, Riggs had a little setback. So I took him to the dog park. Um, there was a larger dog that was in his bubble, which he didn't like. Um, and in the process, he snapped at the larger dog. The dog lunged forward. So I re reflexively yanked him up by the leash, um, trying to prevent a dog fight from occurring. And when he was midair, he started shrieking. Um, I took him home and for the rest of the night I could tell he was in pain because he just wanted to sleep, he really didn't want to walk around, um, and when I would pick him up he would wince when I would touch certain areas around his back. Um, so I took him to my vet the next day, the vet did a physical, um, stated that he most likely had a pulled muscle, provided some anti-inflammatory and pain reliever. Um, said to give him that for five days and after the five days if there was no improvement then he would proceed with an x-ray um, after those five days however he was back to normal so an mm -hmm. x-ray wasn't needed that sounds perfect that's exactly a good course of action how has Riggs been since does he have any hesitancy going up and down stairs um, being pet in any spots or jumping up and down on couches or beds or fun things that he likes to do to be part of the family? The only difference I would say is he walks slow on walks sometimes, um, but I can't necessarily say if it's attributed to the pulled muscle um, because he's a lazy dog in general. <laughs> so. You're a lazy dog. That's what you are. Okay. Um, so mostly you, you, what did you, you've been watching the channel a little bit, right? Yes. A few videos? Yes. Yeah. And I figured you're in the city and it mm -hmm. wouldn't hurt <laughs> to have him get an adjustment. All right. So we're, Riggs is on the animal cracker today. So we have to do a nice, gentle, thorough checkup and see if we find anything. So he might have very well had a pulled muscle, mm -hmm. but very often, think about this, muscles are attached to bones through tendons. So muscle, tendon, bone. Uh, bones are attached to other bones by ligaments. So bone to bone is ligament, muscle to bone is tendon. Um, when a bone gets moved, what is it moved by? It's moved by a muscle and a tendon. So if she jerked reflexively, it's not your fault, you did the right thing, because the first thing is survival, right? So you jerk him away from the um, violent attacking dog, and he yelps, 
because uh, you know something got injured perhaps in that quick moment of survival and the muscle I know there's tendon there too but let's skip that word for just a second but the muscle is what moves the bone and so he very well could still have a misalignment that's just sub threshold with uh, being symptomatic in the moment and what I mean by that is is that um, just a little bit more provocation could put him right back into symptoms so if there's an underlying misalignment that's now in a stable kind of homeostasis or balance then um, he's surviving right now with no symptoms but the last the next time he gets jerked boom he re-triggers and can go right back into pain if we never clear that underlying what chiropractors call a subluxation or misalignment with nerve interference that's still a little bit compromised. So that's what I'm gonna look for today. I might not find it, but if not, we just have a fun, cute video with Riggs. Uh, but let's see if we see a little bit, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn him around. And if we can, we'll just have him face the camera like this. And I'm gonna just start and see what he lets me do. Can I work on you for a little bit? Can I come look and work on you and look at your face and look at your neck and look at your body? Um, the first thing I'm checking is the atlas. And actually there's a big spacing on the right here. The atlas forms wings. And um, I'm looking between the space between the wing of the atlas and the atlas is the top bone, C1. And the space between the atlas and the angle of the jaw, which is the ramus of the jaw. And there's much more space on the right than the left. Now that could be because the occiput is out, but in his case, I think the atlas is what feels um, most out. And I'm also seeing an accompanied spasm on the top left superior aspect between the skull and the atlas. So the spacing on the left is narrowed. I'm gonna pull that down and create bilateral equal spacing. And so I'm gonna just hold him here. Oh, you're biting me. Let's see if that worked. No, a little more. There, got it. Okay, I'm done. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's see what the space feels like now. Let's give him a second to just feel that. He might even shake. Let's see if you want to shake it out. And we're not going to pet him, just give him a space to integrate that. What are you doing? What do you, what do you think of that? Now I look at little things. I look at the ear. Um, the ears are nice. The left one's a little floppy. The tail is in a relaxed pose. All right, let's keep going, okay? We're not quite done yet. Oh, a little stretch. That's called downward dog if you ever do yoga. All right, keep going. So now I'm coming down the neck and I feel something here. Here, you can feel this, Amanda. Can I have a very soft fingertip? So right here is a tight spot and that's it. The middle of the cervicals on the right, C3, C4. I don't know, can you feel a little spasm yeah. there? Mm -hmm. Right in there. So I'm gonna just adjust that. Ooh, it made a little click. Did you hear it? Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think of that one? Oh. Come over here. Let's do more. All right, come back. All right, so let's recheck that. Here, feel. You can stroke down here nice and light. The lighter you touch, the better it is to feel. It's like Braille, although I don't know how to read Braille, but what I've been told with someone that's blind that's reading Braille uh, is if you push too hard, you'll feel nothing. But if you have a light touch, you can find all the beauty in those little bumps that will express language to you. So I look for lightness and the touch to feel the most, especially with animals. Okay, so let's bring Riggs back over. And now we're gonna get more into the problem zone, which is gonna be mid thoracics on, um, I mean, upper thoracics between the shoulder blades. Here, so go ahead and sit, sweetie. Sit, please. Sit. There you go, thanks. With horses, we call that the withers, T3 through T8. But now I'm at the base of the neck and I'm moving into the top thoracics and I'm watching him, I'm watching his eyes. He's blinking a lot right there. He's a little nervous there, he's a little cautious. So I think I found one at T3. And I also watch the ears. 
sometimes the ears will, the set of the ears will give me indication. But that's a spot here. His eyes are blinking. He's a little stressed there. So this one might make him yelp a little bit, but this one's out. And this is right under the harness that she had as her leash. Because you use a harness type leash, correct? Yes. Let's see this. I might have you hold his hand in case he does decide to bite me. Okay. So you're gonna just keep his head from turning. So you put your hands right about there. That's it. All right. So I did, I found two out, T3 and T5. I know um, Riggs is a little freaked out because he's never been adjusted before. And I'm coming down. It's a little bit here at the lumbothoracic, uh, the thoracolumbar junction. Missed it. There it is. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Here's the sacrum, sacrum base. Let's check each leg. So I'm going to bring up this leg. Beautiful, beautiful arabesque. And it's moving great. I'm going to check the tail if you give it to me. Tail feels good. Going, bringing it up, bringing it down, bringing it left, bringing it right. Checking for any tilt in the pelvis, the ilium. I'm checking for muscles now. I'm checking the glutes. Hamstrings are equal bilaterally. Semi-membranosis, semi-tendinosis. Membranosis is more medial. Tendinosis is more lateral. I'm feeling the quads are equal in strength. And every joint feels good on the back legs. Coming down, checking the back right. Hips feel good. Feeling the rib cage. Going underneath, feeling the iliacus, the psoas, the hip flexors. I'm feeling the rectus abdominis connected to the ribs. Breathing feels good. Coming up, checking forward leg on the front left. Feeling each little joint, little flanges little elbow, shoulder. I'm looking for knots. I'm looking for joint range of motion. This one's a little hesitant. Let's go left again just to see if I like what I'm thinking. What I mean is, is it equal? Yeah, he, he jerks that one back. So let's see why. I think he's got a little anterior humerus on the front right. So let's let him just take that in for a second. What? Really? Okay, well you'll get a little lunch later if you just behave yourself. All right, you ready to work a little more? Give me a kiss if that's a yes. Okay, let's do the last little bit, okay? We're gonna do a front right anterior humerus. And got it. Now it comes up, beautiful, beautiful. I think that's it for you. Let's see what else. Um, if you have anything to tell Riggs, please leave it in the comments below. Let's see if we can do a Lion King pose. Well, that didn't work so well. But let's see if he wants to shake it out now, okay? And we might have to back away from him. Maybe stand up and you can stay on the floor with him. I mean, uh, he can stay on the floor. Just let him have a moment to himself where we don't pet him. And see if he wants to give us a little shake. Maybe not. Could be a little camera shy. Here, walk over here, Amanda. Does he shake a lot as a dog? I mean, like, is that part of his thing? So on occasion. Yeah. Yeah. He's very people-oriented. Yes, he's so cute. All right, guess what? Come back over here. We're not gonna get a shake, but the shake is where sometimes a dog or a horse, a horse will more lick and chew like, and a dog will go like, and you didn't do that, so I had to do it. Thank you everyone, please leave a comment below, tell Riggs what you think of him, and wish Riggs success and happiness and health in the rest of 2021. Thank you so much.